Good evening, teacher. Good evening. 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 Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Okay, we are in the last day of this week. This is the last day of this session or this um, group of days. So uh, we are going to end this um, week with the topic adverbs. And at okay. the end of this class, I'm going to send you all the documents that uh, we use in these uh, sessions so you can have all the information for yourselves. So at the end of the class, I will send the document with the topics and examples that we um, did in this in this week or these four days. So we are not going to uh, take more time. We are going to start with the topic to develop this day. So we have here the document and I'm going to start with the topic. And the topic is other verbs. We are going to talk about adverbs and a lot of information about them, but also we are going to talk about a, a specific type of adverbs that is very important that we know. So we are going to start and it says that an adverb is a word that modifies or describes a verb, an adjective and another adverb. So these words or group of words that I remember uh, when we were talking about the nouns and the adjectives, this is one of the uh, four uh, groups or larger groups of words that we use in English. In uh, los adverbios, verdad, son uno de los cuatro uh, grupos más grandes de uh, palabras, verdad, que utilizamos en inglés, junto con nouns and mm -hmm. adjectives. So it says an adverb is a word that modifies or describes a verb. And we have here an example. He sings loud. Lee. This is the adverb. And we have the uh, subject or pronoun, and we have the verb. So it is modifying the uh, verb. Then it can modify an adjective. And we have an example, very tall. Very is the um, adverb in this case, and tall is the adjective, and it is modifying the adverb. And another adverb. And we have the example, and then too quickly. We have two adverbs in this example, too quickly. Or even a whole sentence. Fortunately, I had brought An umbrella. Tell me, Roberto. Uh, your microphone. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, I, have, I have a question. Tell me, tell me. What does that mean? Low, low light. Slowly. He sings loudly. It's like he's raising his voice. 
cuando algo es muy eh, ruidoso, loud es ruido, algo muy ruidoso, en este caso dice que él canta demasiado, o sea, es demasiado ruidoso para cantar, que puede llegar a ser molesto. Ok, thank you. You're welcome. It says that sometimes adverbs uh, end in L-Y. At the end of the word, uh, that's uh, a characteristic of these adverbs that they end with this, L and Y. But there are different types that not the, the main rule. They are like a characteristic of the words that they um, end with L and I, but some uh, look like the same with the adjectives and doesn't change. Hay unos ad, uh, adverbs que terminan con L, Y al final y que son bastante fáciles de identificar, pero hay otros que no cambian y que se parecen mucho a los adjetivos. And we have here the example of fast. So in this case, eh, estamos hablando general de los adverbios. Eh, y dice que son palabras que modifican o describen tanto al verbo como al adjetivo como otro adverbio y a veces también oraciones completas. También dice que terminan con L o con Y, pero tenemos algunas palabras, así como el ejemplo de fast, que son iguales que el adjetivo. We know that in English we have words that have, that have um, different uh, uses. In this case, we can use some words as adjectives and also as adverbs for the uh, meaning in the sentence. So it is normal to find some words that we think there are just in a category of words, but can function as another one. En inglés tenemos muchas palabras que funcionan a veces de diferentes formas. The same word, but they have a different uh, usage in the sentence. So it is normal to find that kind of words. And we have some examples as always. And we have the number one, Tom. Longboat. <clears throat> that is the, the last name of this uh, boy, did not uh, run badly. Then Tom is very tall. The race finished. Too quickly. Fortunately, Lucy record comes win. In, in this case, it is easy to identify G adjectives because, uh, because they are ending with L and why? In this case, we have this one, badly. In this case, we have very, it's not the L and Y, but we know that is, um, in this case, the adjective. Then quickly and to, because it, it is an example to quickly, we have two adverbs in this case, but one is modifying the, the other one. And in this case is fortunately. So it is not complicated to uh, identify the adverbs in those sentences. 
Then we have the adverbs and verbs. It says adverb often modifying verbs. That is something that we already uh, know, that the adverbs can modify the verbs. This means that they describe the way an action is happening. Ya lo vemos más arriba, ¿verdad? El adverbio puede modificar el verbo. In this case, it is describing. The, adjet, the, the adverb is describing the way an action is happening. We know that the verb is the action that we perform eh, every day, maybe. But in this case, the adverb tells us eh, how the, this action is happening. So we can say the adverb describe the way an action is happening. So we have in this case, Bill or Philip sings, that is the action, that is he is singing loudly muy fuerte, in the shower. Something that is uh, very common, right? Singing in the shower. So he is singing loudly in the shower because he is feeling the song in that moment, right? Then we have my cat wakes. My cat waits impatiently for his food. And then we have, I will seriously consider your suggestion. <clears throat> okay. We have here, this is the verb. We are going to mark like this. And then we have the adverb. In this, uh, the cat is waiting. So this is the verb or the action. And this is the adverb. Then I will seriously consider. In this case, this is the auxiliary. And we are going to mark this one. And this is the... Um, the adverb. So in this case, the adverb is telling us how a uh, someone or a uh, something is performing an action. In the first and the second one, for example, it's telling how the cat is waiting for something. In this case, it's for his food. So obviously, the cat is waiting impatiently because he is hungry. So. Um, the advert tell us how an action is performed or how the action is happening. The adverb in each of the sentence about answers the question in what manner. So I'm going to uh, write like this the sentence that is um, that will help us to know uh, this uh, thing of the actions. This is this is the question. In what manner? Okay, in what manner? De qué manera, verdad? Están sucediendo las cosas. For example, how does Philly sing? ¿Cómo está cantando Fields? O Philip. He is singing. Loudly. Loudly. Uh-huh. He's sung, singing loudly. So how does my cat wait? Obviously, impatiently. How will I consider your suggestion? Seriously. 
adverbs can answer other type of question about how an action was performed. They can also tell you when and where. So in this case, we can write it like this. Adverbs can answer these questions. And we have, um, in what manner is the number one? The number two is um, how, for example. Number three, when. And number four, where. So in this case, the adverbs can help us to um, answer those questions in the sentence. For example, in the third one, this one, we can write an example and we have when it says we arrive early. So I am telling when we arrive early. Llegamos temprano. Cuando? Temprano, right? Then we have where and we have an example turn here. Ahí nos dice dónde tenemos que eh, regresarnos, ¿verdad? Aquí. It's eh, answering the question when and where. However, there is one type of eh, verb that doesn't mix well with adverbs. And those are the linking verbs, such as feel, smell, sound, seem, and appear. Typically, we need uh, adjectives, not adverbs. So we have one type of verbs that are not um, working good with the adverbs. And we have the linking verbs. We are going to um, learn about the linking verbs. We are going to uh, talk about something about the linking verbs to know why they can uh, be used with the adverbs. So a linking verb is used to re-identify or to describe its subject. A linking verb is called a linking verb because it links the subject to the subject complement. So it is used to re-identify or to describe its subject. A linking verb, it's called like this. It links the subject with a subject complement. But let me uh, show you something. So I will, give me a second. I will uh, stop this and I will uh, put an image in the document that you need to know uh, or see about the linking verbs that will uh, make this easy to understand. So let me do this, okay. I have an image to explain this topic. Okay, I have the image, so I will share again my screen. 
Okay, we have here the image that is uh, making this easy to understand. So in this case, it says that the linking verbs um, are for re-identifying uh, some words um, or describing its subject. So we have the subject, then we have the linking verb, and we have the subject complement. In that sentence, it's very easy to understand because we have, he is a monster. Who is a monster? He. And the verb be, in this case, is the linking verb because it's linking the subject with the subject complement. And then describes, in the number one is re-identifying, and the number two is describing. We have the subject, we have the linking verb, and then we have the subject complement. He looks stunning. What does he look like? He looks stunning. So we are talking about the subject and we are adding more information. And in this case, we are linking that information to the noun. So eh, estamos diciendo que los linking verbs son eh, verbos que nos ayudan a dos cosas. A poner una, eh, a volver a identificar y a describir. ¿Qué estamos reidentificando y qué estamos describiendo? Pues estamos haciendo esto con el sujeto. We have the subject at the, at the first place. Y estamos reidentificando ese sujeto. En el número uno, he is a monster. Estamos diciendo que él es un monstruo. Y lo estamos uniendo al sujeto. En el número two, he looks stunning. Que se ve increíble, maravilloso. Um, we are saying something about the subject. So in this case, the linking verb are those verbs that help us to link the um, subject with the subject complement. It is not a complement for a long sentence. It is a complement for the subject. So let's un complemento para el sujeto. And we have another one and it's like this. Alan, is a vampire. And we easily can identify that this one is the subject. This one is the linking verb. And this is the complement of the subject. Oh. Okay, this is the complement of the subject. Here, the subject is re-identifying as a vampire. Maybe we know him as a human. Alan is a human for us. But in this case, we are telling that he is a vampire and we are giving him another identification. Le estamos dando otra identificación a Alan. Nosotros también lo conocemos como una persona. But in this case, we are saying that he also is a vampire. Then, Alan is thirsty. Again, this is the subject. This is the complement of the subject and the linking verb. In this case, we are not re-identifying <laughs> because we are not telling that Alan is something else. In this case, we are describing that he feels something. Él está sintiendo algo e él está sediento. So, in the first one is re-identifying, giving another identification to the person or the subject. And in the second one, we are describing that he is feeling something. A linking verb links the subject to the subject complement. The word, phrase, or clause that follows a linking verb to re-identify or describe the subject is called the subject 
complement. Eso es lo que ya estamos viendo. Después del linking verb, lo que sigue es el complemento del sujeto. Y lo utilizamos para reidentificar y para describir. And I'm going to write four examples. And in the next four examples, everything, everything after the linking verb is the subject complement. Also, note that a subject complement function as either as e a, an adjective when it is describing or a noun when it re-identifies. En los cuatro ejemplos que les voy a poner, eh, todo lo que va después del linking verb es el complemento del sujeto y puede funcionar de dos formas. Cuando está describiendo es adjetivo. Cuando está reidentificando it's a noun. An adjective and a noun. Then we have here the examples. Number one, he seems drunk. This one seems is the linking verb. And the subject complement describes. And in this case, this one is an adjective, drunk. This function as an adjective, ta borracho. Then number two, the soap. Days to garlic to eat. And in this case, this one taste is the linking verb. And it is function as an um, adjective phrase because it is describing the flavor of the soap. Adjective phrase. Number three, we have his proposal is madness. And we have here, this one is the linking verb. And this is functioning as a noun, nor an adjective. And the last one, Jenny is a star. Of the future. And this one is also functioning as a noun. Then we have the linking verb. So in this case, it's not uh, something really, um, how can I say, hard to understand because we know that we have some uh, verbs that help us to link one thing with the other and they can function as an ad adverb or as a noun. But in this case, it's not the linking verb that is functioning as an adjective or as a noun. It is the complement. Tell me, Elizabeth. I have a question. Tell me. Uh, all verbs are uh, linking verb. Adverbs. No, in this case, adverbs are not linking verbs. We are saying that the linking verbs can uh, function with the uh, adverbs. So we are uh, studying because we can use this kind of uh, verbs with the adverbs. With the, the adverbs. O sea, los verbos eh, que son como estos, los linking verbs, no pueden trabajar bien con los adverbios, por eso los estamos viendo, porque no los podemos utilizar. In this case, we can use the adjectives with the linking verbs, but not the adverbs. And we are uh, just identifying 
which of the verbs are linking verbs. And if you can see it, we have the verb B that is very common to a function as a linking verb. No es que los adverbios van a funcionar como linking verbs, sino que los linking verbs y los adverbs no se llevan bien y no pueden eh, funcionar juntos. Por eso estamos viendo la diferencia o cuáles son los linking verbs. Ok. We are going to uh, see some real life examples to uh, to talk about adverbs again. So we are going to end this uh, linking verbs topic to go uh, again with the adverbs. So we have real examples of real life examples of linking verbs. This is the last part. The most common linking verb we have here. The most. Excuse me, teacher. Come in. In this case, uh, the linking verb is seems. In this case, uh, it seems. seems so, uh, taste. Taste, yes. And is, is. Yes. Those are um, the linking verbs. So okay. why are we using seems and taste? Because it is talking about feels. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. miss. So the most common linking verbs. Teacher, I have a question. Tell me, tell me. Tell me. I don't know if I understand uh, okay. in the correct way, but um, I think um, a linking verb can mm -hmm. be, um, a verb or also can be a um, uh, pronoun because in this case in this in the sentence uh, number four mm -hmm. is a pronoun the linking verb i don't know i'm just a little confused okay because in in the mm -hmm. other sentences we we have uh, verbs only yes. only that uh -huh. okay we are going to uh, divide this sentence, the number four. We have Jenny, that is a noun, but in this case, is the pronoun. And is changing the she pronoun, okay? She, okay. then okay. we have the linking verb, in this case is the verb is, that is the verb V. So in this case is the third person, the use of the third person, use of third, okay, third person rule. Then we have the complement. All of that is the complement. So is, is the verb. And also it is the linking verb because it is like, uh, uh, how can we say it? Mm, podemos decir que el linking verb es como un puente para unir lo que es el pronombre, que en este caso es Jenny, con el complemento. Que en este caso el complemento funciona como un nombre. ¿Por qué? Porque no nos está describiendo. Y aquí dice que funciona como un adjetivo cuando describe lo, al sujeto o puede ser un nombre cuando lo estamos reidentificando. In this case, Jenny is a person, es una mujer, es una chica. Y también la reidentificamos como una estrella del futuro. Y eh, la reidentificamos de esa manera. No puede ser un adjetivo porque ella no puede ser una estrella como adjetivo, sino que estamos hablando de que puede ser alguien famoso. In that case, si decimos que, va, que ella es famosa, tendría que ser un adjetivo. Pero is es el verbo. No necesitamos otro verbo con los linking verbs. Porque en el primero, seems es el verbo y es el linking verb. Drunk es el adjetivo, borracho. Then, in the second one, 
the soap is el adjetivo porque estamos hablando de la sopa. It, uh, I mean, is the uh, subject, es el sujeto, es el, el, el de lo que estamos hablando. Taste es el verbo que funciona como linking verb para que está o que sabe mucho a ajo. O sea, que a esa persona no le gusta mucho la sopa con sabor a ajo porque no se lo puede comer. So, in this case, the soap is the subject, taste is the linking verb, and to garlicly, to eat, is the el complemento. In the number third, uh, his proposal, su propuesta es el sujeto, is es el verbo que funciona como linking verb. Y madness es el complemento que funciona como un nombre. Y ya decíamos, la cuatro, Jenny, es el sujeto, is el verbo o linking verb, y a start of the future es el complemento. So, in this case, eh, esos son los verbos, is. No necesitamos ponerle otro verbo. En ninguna de las otras eh, oraciones tenemos dos verbos. So, the verb that we are using in the sentence is the linking verb in this case. No sé si contesté tu pregunta o tienes dudas todavía. Um, thank you, teacher. I, I think I understand. Okay, if you have a, another question, you can ask for clarification. Thank you. You're welcome. So, we have a, the most common linking verb. So, uh, I'm saying R in this case. We have and we uh, are using this linking verb that is to be, the verb to be is um are and it is in all forms also the present and the past and the future um is are was where will be was been has been all the forms of the verb be we can uh, use it to uh, be a linking verb all forms then we have um Another linking verbs are uh, related. Other verbs related to sense. And I am saying that with the sims and taste. And we have these ones here. To look, to feel, to smell, to sound, and to taste. So, in this case, los verbos que tienen que ver con los sentidos también funcionan como linking verbs. Eh, mirar, sentir, oler el sonido o escuchar y probar. So, in that case, the number one and number two are part of the uh, verbs related to the senses. And we have also to appear, to become, and to seem. To appear, to become, and to seem. Function, as linking verbs. And in this case, linking verbs are not action verbs. We have the action verbs and now we have the linking verbs. The linking verbs do not express actions. In this este caso, no están expresando una acción como normalmente lo hacen los otros verbos. Um, the verbs to be, to become, and to seem are always linking verbs. Always are linking verbs. However, some verbs can be linking verbs or non-linking verbs, depending on the context. Obviously, we need to see the context to understand uh, what are the linking verbs and the non-linking verbs. And a linking verb tells us what the subject is, not what the subject is doing. Por eso no son de acción, porque nos está diciendo ¿Quién es el sujeto? No, ¿qué es lo que está haciendo el sujeto? Por eso no pueden ser de acción, sino que solo de unión. 
no nos dice qué es lo que hace, ni cuál es la acción, ni qué es lo que está haciendo, ni nada de eso, sino que nos dice quién es el sujeto de la oración. En este caso, por eso son linking verbs. So, that's the end of the link. Algo? Tell me. Eh, te lo voy a decir en español porque no sé cómo decírselo en inglés. Este, okay. ¿Hay alguna manera de identificarlos? o simplemente a la pura memorización, por ejemplo, como algunas cosas que no hay este, una lista en específico, o sea, perdón, de que solo hay una lista en específico y mm -hmm. no se pueden eh, visualizar así. En este caso, eh, básicamente, en este caso de los linking verbs, como lo decía aquí mismo, ¿verdad? El verbo to be siempre, siempre, siempre va a funcionar como un linking verb. Nosotros lo utilizamos para ponerlo, ¿verdad? En las oraciones simples. Eh, she is my sister. Pero nosotros no lo, no lo vemos como un linking verb porque no lo hemos estudiado. Entonces nosotros solo lo utilizábamos por la estructura. Pero en este caso, siempre el verbo to be va a ser un linking verb. Ahora que ya estudiamos los linking verbs, sabemos que son eh, este tipo de, de verbos. Ya no necesitamos decir, ay, ¿qué verbo puedo utilizar? Lo otro son los sentidos. Cuando nosotros hablamos de los cinco sentidos, para sentir, para ver, para oír y todo eso, también son linking verbs. Y decía que también become, también to seem, y eh, eran también linking verbs. Solo esos son los linking verbs. Y básicamente, ya sabiendo eso, nosotros nos acordamos cuando los, los vemos, ¿verdad? El verbo to be los que describen eh, los senses o los, o los sentidos, y el become y el sim. Pero eh, ahí dice, ¿verdad? El contexto. Eh, in that case, cuando utilizamos el contexto, eh, podemos ir viendo, ¿verdad? De que si está describiendo algo en general el verbo, ya no es un linking verb, pero solo sucede con smell o con feel, con sentir, pero lo demás siempre va a ser linking verb. No hay como una lista de decir todos estos, así como los adjetivos o como los adverbs. Todos estos son linking verbs. No, sino que ese grupito, el verbo to be, el que describe los, los sentidos, y el become, solo ese grupito es el linking verb. So, it is not like a, a very large eh, a list of linking verbs. Por eso no hay eh, que una cosa como decir, me voy a memorizar toda esta lista de linking verbs, sino que ya sabemos que ahora lo, el verbo to be también funciona como linking verb. Sí, entiendo. Yo solo le preguntaba como decía, los más comunes pensé que había más que eso. Por eso. Ah, no, o sea, son los que nosotros utilizamos porque básicamente uh, existe un montón de verbos, uh, de action verbs, but in this case, we are using this as linking verbs and not action verbs. Así que no, no necesitamos como memorizarnos toda una gran gama de eh, linking verbs, porque son los más eh, sencillos y los más comunes de utilizar, los que estamos viendo en los ejemplos. Ok, teacher, thank you. You're welcome. Then we have the adverbs and adjective. We already uh, see the adjective, I mean, the adverb and the verbs that we uh, take another way to explain the uses of adverbs and verbs because we are go we um, uh, see the uh, uses of linking verbs too because it is not working with the adverbs, but now we have the adverbs and the adjectives. And the adverb can also modify adjectives and other adver adverbs. Often the purpose of the adverb is to add a degree of intensity to the adjective. También tenemos que los adverbs pueden modificar los adjectives and in this case, la, el propósito de los adverbios son ponerle un grado de intensidad al adjetivo. Le ponemos un grado de intensidad al adjetivo. Adverbs in adjectives. And we have the purpose of the adverb is to add a degree 
of intensity to the adjective, la intensidad del adjetivo. And we have um, some examples. It's quite pretty. Quite pretty. In this case, it's saying that it, she is not pretty. She's quite pretty. Es un poco eh, bonita, ¿verdad? Le está poniendo un nivel, un grado. Not is complete, uh, the meaning of the word. No es bonita, no es preciosa. It's a little bit, but she or he is adding a degree or um, beautiness in this case. So the next one, this book is more interesting. Me. Tell me. Y the pronunciation is quiet. Quiet. Okay. Quite pretty. Quite pretty. Quiet is eh, estar en silencio o estar tranquilo. In this case, quiet es algo, un, un, un eh, degree. Pero quiet es para cuando estamos en silencio tranquilos, ¿verdad? Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Then we have this book is more interesting than the last one. So in this case, I found a book that is interesting, but this one is more. I can add some um, degrees to the book. Es más interesante que el último. Aquel fue interesante, pero este es más. I am adding a degree. Then the weather report is almost always right. In this case, it's saying that the weather report is almost always, casi siempre, en, está en lo cierto, almost always right. No siempre, pero casi siempre. The adverb almost is modifying the adverb always. In this case, we have two adverbs in this way. We have almost and we have always. And in this case, almost is a modifying always because it is not all the time, it's some time. But we are not uh, writing some time. We are writing almost always because of the degree. In este caso, el almost está modificando al always que obviamente sabemos que significa siempre. Pero en este caso no escribimos a veces porque eh, el grado de estar en lo correcto es más alto que a veces. And both of them are modifying this one, that is right. So, los dos están modificando a esa palabra, pero uno modifica más al otro. Y los dos juntos están modificando una palabra en sí. Then we have some example. Is my singing too loud? I have a question. Is my singing too loud? Is my singing too loud? My cat is incredibly happy. Incredible, incredibly happy to have his dinner, to have his dinner. Then we will be slightly late. To the meeting. And this uh, bridesmaid Dress is a very flattering
shade of cook. Okay, those are modifying to loud, in this case, incredibly happy, slightly late, and very old lottery. So those are um, modifying the adjectives. So now we are going to um, see the sequence the sequence of the um, adverbs. That is um, very important because we need to know how to use them. And we have the degrees of comparison. That is the most uh, common way to uh, study the adverbs. We have some degrees and it's talking about um, the time or the frequency we did something. In this case, we are uh, like adjectives. Uh, the adverbs can show degree of comparison. Also, it's slightly less common to use them this way. With certain flat adverbs that add adverbs that look like that look exactly the same as their adjective counterparts, the comparative and superlative forms that we already uh, study in another class the comparative and the superlative forms that look the same as the adjective, comparative, and superlative. In this case, <clears throat> it's saying that the adverb also have the superlative and comparative form. Ya habíamos hablado de los adjetivos y de la forma comparativa y superlativa, pero también los adverbios tienen esa forma eh, comparativa y superlativa, así como lo tienen los adjetivos. It's usually better to use the stronger adverbs eh, or a stronger adjectives and verbs rather than relying on comparative and superlative adverbs. In this case, it is, it is not common to use um, comparative and superlative adverbs because we use a stronger adverbs. No es común utilizarlo porque utilizamos mal los eh, adverbios que son fuertes in this case. Uh, an absolute adverb describes something in its own right. Un adverbio um, absoluto describe algo de su, por su mismo eh, forma, no necesita nada más. He smiled warmly. Ella sonrió o él sonrió de manera calurosa o cálida. And to make the comparative form on a, of an adverb that ends in L and Y, we add the word more. En este caso, para hacer lo que son los comparativos, eh, utilizamos aquellos adverbios que ya habíamos visto que utilizaban la L y la Y al final, solo agregamos la palabra more. He smiled more warmly than the others. Él sonríe más de la manera más cal, eh, cálida que los otros. Then, Excuse me, uh, what meaning the, the last sentences? Because I don't understand nothing. The, the, we are talking about this bridesmaid. Yes. The, uh, talking about the dress. Yes. Está hablando de el eh, vestido. Está hablando de que el vestido eh, es bastante... Eh, En ese caso estamos hablando de, de, de los vestidos que se utilizan para la boda, ¿verdad? Ok. Es eh, un poco eh, favorecedor o que tiene un, porque ahí dice shade, estamos hablando de un tipo de color eh, que es el, eh, ¿cómo lo podemos decir? Eh, no es, no tenemos como una traducción específica, pero es como... Está demostrando que es un poco eh, favorecedor porque tiene ese, esa uh, sombra, ¿verdad? O esa forma. Ah, o sea, ah, algo sombra, algo así, me parece. Ajá, porque está hablando de, de, de que Ajá. tiene como esa tonalidad, ¿verdad? Sí, Una sí, tonalidad sí. que favorece. Yes, miss, thank you. You're welcome. Pero es como algo bastante chic, ¿verdad? Para la... Ah, in this case, we uh, can uh, say like cute, 
Someone asked for the pronunciation. So, uh, continue because it's almost time to end uh, this uh, session for this week. So, um, we were talking about that, the way to uh, create the uh, comparative and the superlative form of the adverbs. And he's saying that with the comparative form, we need to add more. And with the superlative form, we add most. The same with the adjectives, more and most. And we have he smile most warmly of them all. El sonríe de la manera más cálida de todo, ¿verdad? No hay quien lo compare. So in the placement of the adverbs, we place the adverb as close as possible to the words they are supposed to modify. Tenemos que ponerlos lo más junto posible a la palabra que queremos modificar. Putting the adverb in the wrong spot can produce an adverb sentence at the best and completely change the meaning at worst. Be especially careful about the word only, and which is one of the most often misplaced modifiers. Consider the difference between, and we have two sentences. Philip only feed the cat, or we have Philip feed only the cat. So in this case, he's saying that uh, we need to put the advert close to the word we are going to modify. Tenemos que ponerlo cerca de la palabra que vamos a modificar y tenemos que tener cuidado cuando utilizamos la palabra only, porque es uno de los eh, modificadores que mmm, con más error lo ponemos en un lugar que no es. Y tenemos las dos oraciones. La primera, Philip only feed the cat. Philip solo alimentó al gato. And then we have the other one, Philip feed only the cat. Philips eh, alimentó solo al gato. In the first sentence, that means that Philip did was feed the cat. In that case, he only did that. En ese caso, él solo alimentó al gato. He didn't pet the cat or pick it up or anything else. In that case, él solo alimentó al gato, no lo tocó, no lo levantó, no hizo nada. Then, the second sentence means that Philip feed the cat but he didn't feed the dog, the bird, or anything else who might be around. En la segunda oración, dice que solo alimentó al gato, no alimentó al perro, al pájaro, o algún otro animal que estuviera ahí cerca. With an adverb is modifying a verb phrase, the most natural place for the adverb is usually the middle of the phrase. Cuando un adverbio está modificando a una eh, frase que lleva el verbo, eh, la manera más natural de posicionarlo es en medio de la frase. Por ejemplo, we are quickly approaching the deadline. Second one, Philip has always loved singing. And I will happily assist you. When to avoid adverbs? ¿Cuándo debemos evadir los adverbios? Um, it says that Ernest Hemingway is often held up as an example of a great writer. Dice que Ernest Hemingway es tomado como un gran escritor que odiaba los adverbios and advises other writers to avoid them. In reality, it's impossible to avoid adverbs altogether. Sometimes we need them, and all writers use them occasionally. Él odiaba los adverbs. Le decía a los demás que no los usaran, pero es casi imposible no utilizarlos. The trick is to avoid unnecessary adverbs. El, el truco es no utilizar adverbios innecesarios. When your verb or adjective doesn't seem powerful or precise enough, Instead of reaching for an adverb to add more color, try reaching for a stronger verb or adjective instead. So, necesitamos evadir los adverbios innecesarios y cuando nuestro adjetivo no se vea poderoso o preciso, buscamos mejor un adverbio para 
agregarle color a la frase, ¿verdad? O podemos utilizar un verbo fuerte. Most of the time, you will come up with a better word and your writing will be stronger. Esto es para los que les gusta escribir, ¿verdad? Que van a evadir lo que son los adverbios innecesarios y buscar palabras que puedan darle color a sus eh, escritos. In this case, we use the sequence adverbs first, next, then, and finally. Utilizamos los eh, sequence verbs, los, los adverbios de secuencia. First, primero, next, eh, siguiente, then, entonces, and finally. To describe the order in which two or more actions happen. And we have an example just to finish the session. Making an omelet. And we have first, I break the eggs. Then I heat the butter in a pan. Next, I add the eggs. And finally, I eat the omelet with toast. Entonces, los adverbios de secuencia son los que nos, nos dan, ¿verdad? Eh, como eh, para describir el orden en que se hacen las cosas, pero no repitiendo las palabras. Tenemos para hacer un omelet first. Ese es el adverbio, first. Primero, rompo los huevos. Then, not, not second, sino que then, después, I heat the butter in a pan. Caliento la mantequilla en una eh, cacerola o en, en, en un sartén. Next, después, next, I add the eggs, agrego los huevos. And finally, que ya es el punto final, I eat the omelet with toast. Me como el omelet con tostadas. And those are the sequence adverbs that help us to make the, um, the sequence of the action. So now it's time to end the session and to uh, end this week. So we are going to see each other on Monday. Uh, I will send you the document with the information and with the examples and all of that. So have a good night. Have a really, really good uh, weekend. And see you on Monday, that is the last week of this um, uh, course. So have a good night and a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. 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 Thank you